so students in today's video we are going to see in detail the entire information and points for ICT that is information and communication technology so that this lecture will help you in order to understand the unit and to understand what exactly you know from exam point of view you have to read so let's start with the session hello students welcome to global online and on global online we have started preparation classes for your AP set examination wherein we have brought paper one complete course now this complete course is will be conducted in english as well as in hindi and this courses will be conducted daily live at 9 pm the speciality about this course is that this course will have full syllabus video lectures including topic wise mcqs and full syllabus notes which can be downloaded in pdf format at the same time you have full syllabus mock test and 2000 plus mcqs practice questions which will help you to crack your examination in a very systematic way in order to understand how to avail this course and how to access this course you have to go to google play store download the app that is called as global online app register yourself with the registered mobile number once you registered yourself you will be able to see the courses now in that you have to cl click your AP that is Andhra Pradesh set examination. Once you click on that and once you pay the fees, you will be able to access all the details very well where you have the theory classes, the, uh, the MCQs preparation and much more which will help you to crack your examination. Apart from that, first let's quickly have a glance at the syllabus so in this uh, information and communication technology you they will uh, join they will collaborate the questions either in the form of you know classroom either in the form of communication but in that they will definitely put a uh, a topic of uh, ICT so you should be able to uh, ICT is in uh, your research also it is in, in the it's a part of your communication also so you should be able to understand the question and read the question correctly and then answer it so yes now the topic starts with your general abbreviation and terminology which I have added in the video so that you can just take a pause and quickly revise those terminology basics about the internet intranet email video uh, audio and video conferencing certain digital initiatives which I have listed down ICT and governance topic. So let's start with the first type uh, topic is uh, types of network. In between, I have added the terminology part. Now this terminologies, you'll be able to just uh, pause the video and you can see that particular terminology or so you can revise or you can take the important notes. So first, let's start with the type of network. Now the types of networks which are available are LAN, MAN, WAN. Apart from this, there are many, but let's go one by one. So when I talk about LAN, it's nothing but a local area network. Uh, the network in which a computer, that is a computer network, which operates in a very small area. That, it's, that is, it connects the computers to a small geographical area in the form of the offices or the companies or the schools or the any other organization. So it is like the... Uh, you can say it is for a specific area, either it is called as the home network, the office network, the school network, or the institutional network. So that type of network is called as what the local area network. Now, when we uh, talk about metropolitan area network, so it is basically uh, that is called as MAN, is a high speed network that covers a large amount of uh, geographical area in the form of what? In the form of your uh, the like for example it is in the form of your metro city or a town so it is it is set by connecting the local area networks using routers and local telephone exchange lines now here we can take an example of a cable network uh, tv network we can take an example of telephone services that provides high speed ds lines and then we have fire stations connected to the city we have branches of schools which are connected to the city. So it's such type of network where it, it is used, okay? It will be called as what? It will be called as your uh, man, okay? Now here you please remember that your, uh, I mean to say, uh, short forms also can, acronyms also can come or your uh, long forms also can come, match the following also can come. So you should be able to read it from all the point and answer the question. Now here there was a specific uh, acronym that is called as DSL. So it is nothing but a digital subscriber line. Now, what is it? It is basically a subscriber loop. So it is a family. You can say the families of technology, which is helped, you know, in uh, transmission. 
So yes, that is all about metropolitan area network. Now let's go to wide area network that is called as WAN, which extends to a very large geographical area. It is not only confined to the offices or the town, but it is definitely, it is set up by telephone lines, fi uh, fiber optic, as well as satellite links. So it is mostly by used by the big organizations or the multinational organizations with respect to their, you know, to communicate with the branches of the customers across the world. Since I'm talking about van, so wide, metro, that is man, uh, that uh, the initial which we studied was local. So local, metro and well as van. <coughs> Sorry. So now this is, although it is uh, structurally similar to man, but the it is different from man with their respect to range. So man can cover at the most 50 kilometers, whereas van can cover uh, larger than 15 kilometers, okay? Or it can reach to 1,000 kilometers also or more. Now, uh, local area network, as I said, I have just given a diagrammatic representation over here. Then we have done as van, we have done land, uh, sorry, land, van, man, can, that is campus area network. So now let's see what is this uh, uh, details about. So here, basically, uh, when we talk about this, I've just added all the extra or local area network we did, van we did. So all extra parts we I have added so that in case if you if you get time, you can just read it out. Any form of question is expected. Okay, diagrammatic representation also I have showed you. So like, for example, when you talk about man, so the office building, a university campus, a government building, a residential area, Okay, so these these are <coughs> sorry questions which are expected from anywhere. So you should be able to read it very thoroughly or listen to it very carefully. And now we, as we said, we talked about CAM that is campus area network. Um, that is a school getting connected to the library or uh, getting connected to the hostel. So this year you can see what which type of network that is campus area network. Apart from this, we also have something called as SAN that is called as the uh, storage area network, which is specialized high speed uh, network. Okay, it provides uh, block level network access to storage. They're typically composed of host switches, storage elements and devices which are interconnected with the help of vari variety of technologies and protocols now yes uh, value added network we have to also ban uh, value added network also the concept which you have it's a private hosted service that provides company with security way so it is like a security and uh, way to share and send and share the data with the counterpart party so it is like it stands as in security so it is a it is also called as the turnkey communication to facilitate the electronic data interchange or to provide the network services. <clears throat> so it is nothing but, you know, the connected intelligence, which provides a reliable and view of devices, the consumers own, how consumers use them and how and when and where these devices are connected. So it is like a monitorizing uh, part. So that will, that takes care with the help of what value added network. The next is, is just again a diagrammatic representation. Again, here you can take and halt for two minutes of your video. You can see the whole full forms I have written, how it stands with personal area network, going to the local area network, then coming to metropolitan and then coming to wide area network. So here, what is interested to you is the range. Okay, starting with pan, 100 meters to, sorry, 10 to 100. LAN is its meters. LAN it is up to five kilometer. MAN as we discussed five kilometer to fifteen, and WAN which can again go to thousand kilometers. So this is very very important. Application is device to device or person to person. LAN it is enterprise the organization. MAN it is you know replacement um, for the miles assess. Mobile phones and cellular data with the help of WAN. Okay, so this this talks about what this talks about. Uh, the networks and you have a little information about network okay now uh, we have basics of internet in the form of intra extra and internet so we when we talk about intranet so it is the an intranet creates the connections inside the organization when we talk about extranet it creates the connection uh, beyond uh, sorry connections outside or beyond an organization and when we talk about internet, it connects the, creates the connection uh, between the computers and the world. So intra, 
inside extra outside internet that is connection throughout the world so just keep this in mind this can you know uh, get any form of question uh, again yes little bit of assess i'm just sorry that this image form it is so in case if it is not clear bit i will read it out for you so don't worry for it so internet the network uh, there is this is a network that is accessible to a person who knows the ip address uh, it is a global communication access through the web and the literacy worldwide that is web worldwide web intranet if i'm talking that it, it is at the wider part okay intranet it is a network which is not available to the outside world it is only within we have just say, just saw now like for example a wi-fi been set but it has been protected with a password extranet it is actually an inter internet that is partially accessible to the authorized outside authorized okay it is it is the shared content assessed by groups through which the cross enterprise uh, through which they cross the enterprise boundaries so first comes as your intra then followed by extra and then the internet next we have as computer input and output devices there are a lot of questions on this you know uh, sort out with our input and output devices now please remember one thing very well when you are doing this particular topic uh, some students are scared of ICT because they are not from this background. Uh, so just remember one thing in NTA, UGC NTA net examination out of the five questions, no doubt, I'm not talking about all the five questions. Obviously, two questions will be definitely a difficult level. OK, the difficulty level will be very high, but three questions will be very easy. It only needs that you need to read it very concentratedly. Uh, those three, because see, everyone is not from an IT background. So it is very difficult, even that is understood by them. But it doesn't mean that the simple questions will be given and you can just anyone can come and crack it. No, it's not possible. The questions will be simple, but definitely they will be twisted with a different form of sentences. So you should be very clear on what you're reading and how you are putting up your answers for the select for the given question. So when I talk about computer devices, which are divided into two, that is input and output. So we, which are the following input devices? Because as in question, they will merge up and give you the devices and you are supposed to write or you are supposed to sort out. Okay. So input devices, when we talk about it is mouse, it is keyboard, it is webcam, touch screen, it is called joystick, or it is, you can call it as uh, microphones or you can call it as optical pen so it is like an uh, mouse okay optical optical pen is nothing but uh, you can also call it as wireless mouse okay now uh, when we talk about output devices it is in the form of monitor speaker uh, printer projector headset and the plotter so these uh, this particular reason to get this slide was you know the differentiation between because they can definitely put a question to you and these questions are seen many a times in an examination they merge up and they'll tell you to sort it out okay now next is yes a very compulsory question on you know uh, the memory part uh, so it talks with uh, sorry it starts with bits eight bits into is equal to one byte 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobyte is equal to 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes is, well, is equal to 1 gigabyte. Now, here basically what there are two, three type of questions. First of all, they will tell you to add, uh, arrange the given options in the form of ascending and descending order. Sometimes they give you in the form of, you know, recognition with the help of um, one, uh, one uh, sorry, 1024 gigabytes is what type of terabyte. So, you need to uh, go it other way around also, but you should know the sequence also. So lowest starts from nibble, that is four bits is a nibble. So then we have bits, bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabyte, petabyte. Till now we used to get the question on terabytes, but now it is even uh, exa, zeta, yota, and brontobytes are, you know, are a part of your question. So you should ideally geo, uh, geopyte, you have to do till here because any form of question will be coming. So each one or a zero is in a binary uh, number is called as a bit. So this four bits form a nibble and eight bits makes a particular byte. And then the then accordingly the flow goes on. I have told you how ty what type of questions are expected and how you're supposed to prepare. Again, this will not, right, right now you're listening to my video, you know it very well, maybe you have done it very well, so it's well and good. 
but again this has to be done at the time just before the revision of an examination see it is we can we completely understand to revise everything is not possible i'm i'm talking about the examination day but you have to be very smart on what points to be revised so uh, in ict this is the one particular point which you are supposed to revise certain that is because this question comes a very factual question so if you say that 1024 terabyte is equal to 1 exabyte is definitely going to be a wrong no one can help you out so you last minute revision this should be a part of your compulsory last minute revision okay then coming to the binary uh, system i mean to say a binary system which has a base of two that is zero and one when we talk about decimal it has a base of 10 that is you know uh, uh, starting from the number zero ending up to nine when we talk about hexadecimal that is 16 base as 16 so it includes the numbers from zero to nine and it includes alphabet a b c d e f now yes uh, you may have a question that ma'am does this type of question comes yes it comes and it has been seen in the university papers in the form of math the following or you know individual questions so you should be able to under identify binary basis two decimal basis 10 hexa the basis 16 and octa the basis 8 so you should be able to know it and what comes under them that is if i talk about octa so it is from 0 to the digit 0 to 7 then we have yes now as i said i have some uh, terminologies for you so i definitely i meant to say i have just systematically ensured that it is all you know there in one slide so you can again take a minute for this you can pause the video and def or if you feel at the end you can stop the video at this particular point and ensure that you know you come back to this and just quickly revise certain you know uh, terminology so every day five five even if you can finish it off for five to ten it will be good so it will be a revision now uh yes th there was a there is uh in 2019 and 20 there is a question seen on data and information which was in one of the old syllabus so let's quickly have a look also at them so what is data data is nothing but the character the number the image the word the text which means little or nothing to a man when the data is processed. So you can say it is raw. So when it is, you know, when it is organized, it is presented, the raw data gets converted into information. So the something which is raw is called as data. Something which is, you know, it is a, a finished product is called as the information. When I say finished product, it means the final outcome. Data alone, alone, sorry, cannot be significant at all. But yes, information is always important by itself. Data alone can't be having that amount of importance. Data is based on records and observation, whereas information is based on the analysis of the data. Data is organized and does not depend on information, whereas, sorry, data is unorganized and does not depend on any type of information, whereas information is completely organized and always has to depend on data okay so please remember uh, when you're reading it okay sometimes you just scan it but uh, you have to ensure that you know at least one part of the thing you remember very well so that other does not you know you do not take have to take effort so when i say data is raw it means it's understood it is not important it is not organized or it is just based on certain things that is in the form of record and observation but if I say information is, uh, you know, is a final product or a finished product or an outcome. So it is understood that it is definitely, it has been planned very well. It has been organized. It has been, you know, analysis is done or it is by itself important. Now, when we talk about memory, yes, there are two types of memory that is primary and secondary memory. Under primary, we have RAM and ROM. Then we have hard disks, profi, CD-ROMs, DVDs. So let's quickly have the details about it so yes and apart from this there is a virtual memory or it is also called as virtual storage is a memory which uh, is a memory management technique that proves idealized sub abstraction of the storage resources that is actually available on a given machine so which creates a form of you know illusion to users for a very large memory like for example when you talk about computer memory virtual address Transla translation in the form of physical address okay catch memory that is with the help of a uh, smallest and fast uh, secondary memory which is largest and slow so your catch memory is the one which is very small but it is very fast 
uh, secondary memory is the one which is large, but it is very slow. Virtual memory is nothing but the mean memory, which is, you know, which is a part, uh, which is also called as a virtual storage, as a memory management technique of the given uh, machine. Now, again, a very important distinguish. People again get confused with RAM and ROM. So let's quickly have a look at this also. So when we call it RAM, it is nothing but the uh, read uh, write memory, okay, or random access memory we call, and it is ROM is also called as read only memory. So in RAM, less data store is stored in uh, when the power is turned off, okay. Whereas in ROM, the data inside it retains even if the power of the CPU is you know switched off, okay, switch turn off. So when the less data gets stored, so you have a chances of data getting loose in RAM, whereas it, it is, you know, not possible in ROM. Uh, RAM is costlier, whereas ROM is cheaper as compared to RAM. Uh, RAM holds a large amount of data compared to ROM, so the pe memory power, you can say, uh, whereas ROM has only a, can store only a small amount of data. It is faster, that is, I'm talking about RAM, whereas ROM is uh, comparatively slow. Uh, RAM uh, data can be modified easily, whereas ROM, the data can be hardly, you know, or never it can be modified. Then coming to, yes, a part of, you know, static RAM and dynamic RAM. So uh, that is SRAM and DRAM. So types you have under it. So let's have, because sometimes one or two questions are also seen. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, SRAM uses transistor to store a single bit of data, whereas dynamic RAM uses a separate capacitor to store the data. Uh, SRAM does not need periodic refreshment to, you know, uh, to maintain the data, whereas D dynamic RAM reads a periodic refreshment to maintain the data, uh, to maintain the charge in the capacitor of the data. So SRAM structure is complex, okay, whereas DRAM structure is simple as compared to SRAM. So if one is complex, other is bound to be simple. Static RAM is expensive, whereas uh, dynamic RAM is less expensive when compared to each other, okay? So please remember when they come, they, when they are compared, so one, if it is costlier, the other is cheaper as compared to the uh, earlier one. So it is not the meaning that it is very cheap. It's not like that, it, to the comparison. Then we have uh, static RAM is faster. As I said, it is expensive and faster. Whereas the dynamic RAM is slower as well as it is, you know, less expensive. So static RAM is used in catch memory, which is, you know, which is, uh, I mean to say, which is faster. You, we have learned now only. And uh, dynamic RAM is the one which is used in the mem uh, main memory, which is slow. So you can uh, convert them or you can keep them in that way also in mind, which will help you to get it recalled. Then, uh, yes, we talk about data storage capacity in the form of secondary memory. So let's see the increase in the storage capacity. It starts with floppy disk that is 1.4 MB. Now, why I'm reading this because in certain uh, questions, uh, the MB, I mean, this is the measurement. What is the capacity was also been the question asked, okay? Uh, so we, first we have a floppy that is 1.4, CD-ROM is 700 MB. Uh, DVD is 4.7 GB, that is gigabytes. Blu-ray is 25 to 128 gigabytes, whereas hard disk is in terabytes and magnetic tapes are in the form of, you know, one up to 185 terabytes. Okay, so hard drive, you know, is, has an increased capacity. So the data, data storage devices are very different. They have different capacities and they have the capacity to store large number of data also. Coming to, yes, uh, there is a process in your ICT. It talks about virtual learning. So basically, what is this virtual learning environment, which can be uh, mixed up with your teaching aptitude and they can make a question out of it. So we should understand what is virtual learning. It is an educational technology, which is web-based. Uh, that is a form of digital aspect for the course, you know, in order to study the particular course within the educational institution. 
So they, they present resources, activities, interaction within a course structure and provide you know, uh, uh, them for a different stage of assessment. Like for example, distance learning degree program, professional certification, or you also called as instructional videos, uh, video or you know, uh, audio lectures, books, articles, or other writings, and in the form of webinars. So this can be happened. So learning happens in the form of what? In the form of virtual and learning, that is in the form of digital uh, space. Then we have next is, yes. Now here I have touched some of the latest, you know, uh, things with respect to ICT. So let's see now it talks the first slide that is the first topic is about the eight computers, supercomputers which are used by Indian institutional educational institutions for uh, research under what under the national supercomputing mission of government of India. So which are they and let's see who who with whom they are possessed by. So color Bosco, boson that is Cray XC30, which has been possessed by Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. HPC that is IIT Delhi has a supercomputer in their campus called as HPC. Paramishan is a product of Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Param, Kanch, uh, sorry, Kanchan Ganga is the uh, NIT Sikkim campus, or uh, belong to NIT Sikkim campus. Param Shivai is... Um, IIT that is Varanasi, uh, been uh, that is it is by uh, Varanasi, uh, sorry, by IIT Varanasi. Param UR2, the center of development that is CDAC or uh, for advanced computing. Okay. Uh, Sashastra that is Cray XC40 is again, uh, you know, uh, I mean to say a computer super education, sorry, super computer education and research center. which is nothing but a facility at Indian Institute of Science. And the last one is Virgo, Virgo that is by, which has been held by IIT Madras, okay, IIT Madras. So when we talk about um, uh, various universities, so whether it is Param Shiva in the form of uh, Banaras Hindu University or whether it is uh, Virgo in the form of IIT Madras, but these are the eight supercomputers which have been uh, used by our, Indian educational institutions under the supervision or under national supercomputing mission of government of India. So obviously this is a proud moment for us also, but you should be aware that where, what, and which institutes are using them. Now, apart from this CDAC, now CDAC uh, we had, so it is nothing but a center for advanced, uh, sorry, development of advanced computing and Indian Autonomous Scientific Society operating under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. You can get a question, so be careful. ICERT, that is the Indian, uh, Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. It's an office within the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology of Government of India. And it is one of the nodal agency as a mediator to deal with the cyber security threats strengthen the security related defense for the Indian, Indian internet domain. So Indian internet domain, anything, uh, any security issues will be sorted out by Indian computer emergency response team. Then, as I said, we are doing a little bit of uh, uh, latest uh, updates with ICT. So you have those slides for uh, some time now. So one of the private search engine that has been developed in India, that is one of, this is one of the latest news, which was launched in the year 2021 itself on 26th of Jan. And it is a proud Indian to occupy, uh, you know, uh, for every Indian to occupy its search engine name QMAMU, that is, which is designed by the Indian researcher under Atmanirbhar Bharat, that is self-independent India. Nitish uh, Raj, uh, Rajesh Bhai Danani, a young man from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, ha, is the one who has launched this private search engine, uh, dated 26 Jan 2021. Then, uh, Diksha, yes, now, as I said, certain few portals uh, with reference to ICT, let's quickly have a look at them. First is Diksha, that is the Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing. So it is an initiative of National Council for Education, Research and Training, that is NCRT and Ministry of Education, you can say, or Ministry of Human Resource Development, which was launched in the year 2017. So what is the full form? Who has launched it? And uh, sorry, when and who has launched it? Very, very important. It's a platform for school education available for all the states and the central government for grade you know, one to 12. The platform can be assessed through a web portal and mobile application. 
it provides a pool of e content linked to curriculum currently the platform supports 18 languages and various curriculums across the india so this this information is enough which you have to keep in mind now we next we have as manodarpan which was uh, scheduled in july 2021 the ministry of human resource development has uh, launched this initiative with a reference to psychological support to the students with reference to the mental and well health and well being in the challenging time with reference to pandemic so manodarpan is uh, actually an initiative under atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan that is a scheme which is launched by uh, prime minister Mo mr no modi ji the platform is basically for you know providing psychological support psychological that is you know with the help of your psychology understanding uh, you know not only to students you know to the sorry on to the students uh, with the help of counseling services online resource and a helpline so this is basically uh, like you know a counseling uh, to the students uh, not to get distracted or disturbed next one uh, yes there are certain new initiatives with the respect to state i have written so chatisgarh has uh, an education at your doorstep initiative which is basically the state government has released the platform is called padhai uh, tohare daur it means education at your doorstep so it is to tackle the covid crisis okay the objective of this particular program is to connect the teachers and students without bring, bringing any uh, any uh, type of you know uh, discomfort so there has to be good education content from the comfort of the houses okay that is comfort from the homes kerala that is kite initiative uh, by kerala has been effectively used to ensure the continuous learning in the form of you know physical distance and social utility into practice so that uh, the aim is to foster promote and implement modernization of educational institutions then we have the in the state of madhya pradesh there was something which was called as uh, dg uh, leap that is learning and enhancement program which is basically initiative responding to the current crisis by introducing a series of intervention uh, in the form you know uh, with this reference to socio economic profile of the students uh, studying in the state uh, run over uh, sorry state run government schools and uh, and their limited access to the educational resources especially during lockdown so this is basically with you know from the view point of pandemic which can which started since last year and you know and as well as this year so you may get a question out of it so in the state of maharashtra they have the learning from home package in an ongoing situation that is of closure of school uh, with support you know with the department of school education with technical support so it has developed three phases of learning that is continuity plan to ensure continuity in learning for all children from grade 1 to 12 uh, then next one which we have is uh, yes some of the examples where you have the uniform resource locator with the uh, with its sub uh, uh, labelings as well as some domains that is dot com refers to commercial now this is also was one of the question in one of the previous year so you should know that what domain is used for what so when we talk about dot com commercial dot org for non profit organization dot net that is for network support group or then we have dot uh, gov that is government institutions and dot edu that is specifically educational institutions so when we look at the resource uh, uniform resource locator so this is the hypertext transfer protocol we have the sub domain we have the main domain and we have the top level domain so this is divided into you know four four basic divisions okay that is the protocol the sub domain the domain main domain and the top domain next you have okay so here we have a top domain there are basically recognized with dot com country code top level domain by dot in generic top level domain by dot net second level top level domain by dream house and third level is by web uh, world wide web so this is that that is www.dreamhouse.com so dream house it means it's a name the name okay so when we talk about third level domain so this whole address comes that is what it is about how the domains uh, play an important role 
then coming to certain uh, new bodies that is first is the international internet society sorry american international non profit organization which handles internet education and policy development which was founded in the year 1992 the mission was to promote open development evaluation and use of internet for the benefit okay please remember see in the year 1992 also it was stated irrespective of what people use it for but it, the main intention was for the development now when we talk about icann that is the internet corporation for assigned names and numbers is the one which is responsible for coordinating the management of technical elements to dns to ensure universal resort resolve uh, sorry resolvability so that all users of the internet can find valid address that is from 80 that was which was uh, established from 18 september 1998 Next is the World Wide Web Consortium, that is V. Uh, sorry, W three C. It's an international standard organization which was founded in the year nineteen ninety four, which was currently led by Tim Brenner Lee. The consortium has a number of org. Sorry, as is made up of member organization with a full time staff working uh, towards the developing the standard of World Wide Web. so this is association basically formed in order to develop the standard of world wide web next when we have yes uh, there are there are few basic questions on this which i have seen so i've just decided to add that in your revision part so that you know even if in case if you miss an mcq it will be easier for you so now the basic structure of human com the computer was developed by von neumann that is architecture which is also known as neumann model and princeton architecture it's a computer architecture based uh, on 1945 description of computer by mathematicians and physicist john neumann english mathematician and inventor charles bagage is credited with having convinced the first automatic digital computer pascal strangle and probability theory okay that as i said there was a question based on this so you can see you know the connectivity is not there because who was the basic architecture of computer that was a question but uh, these were the names charles bagage is english mathematician and inventor charles bagage is credited with automatic first digital computer please remember many students have the basic uh, notion that you know a wrong uh, preconceived notion that it is is the architecture pascal is not related to you know uh, uh, architecture he is also the one who has invented the digital calculator and gordon moore is the one who has you know uh, said that the number of transistors would fit in the computer chip would be double every year so this people personalities you should be able to remember then next one is next uh, yes we have the uh, topic on you know the common threats with respect to ICT. So let's quickly have a look at them. That is spam. It's nothing but you know, uh, most of our emails accounts are come with a spam or a junk folder, with more than fifty percent of the mails into the folder, which is nothing but you know, an annoyance. Uh, I mean to say, obviously we get annoyed. Annoyed. So spam mails are not a direct threat. However, they may contain a virus. Okay. Adware is a type of malware software that displays unwanted ads when a user is surfing the internet. so the ad opens direct you to the search to the advertising website and makes marketing type of data uh, with uh, which uh, with i mean to say the one who is surfing it which can be considered as malicious uh, which which is not right torjon is nothing but you leave your computer completely unprotected you, you which mean that which can mean the ha hackers can steal any data from your system uh they are present themselves as an harm torjons often present themselves as an harmless computer so that the hackers can easily get into your pcs or the system without you being detected virus is uh, called as the vital information resource under seas please remember how how is this the acronym is named as vital information resource under seas so it's one of the most talked about internet threats is it is a virus viruses usually attack themselves you know on convert uh, to downloads as they are designed to spread you know at an alarming rate so they are attached the files for downloads via you know cds dvds usbs or loaded by the onto the computers by opening an infected mail attachment so you should be very careful with such threats and then you have worms that is you know they make their way to the computer with the help of email attachment or usb stick once they are into the computer they get in, 
infect the computer completely, which will not only, sorry, which will not only, uh, you know, uh, definitely does not appears to be harmless, but once you're logged in, you, your system is infected. The next is you called it as phishing. That is, it's the simplest term. Phishing is a form of fraudulent activity. Uh, more often than not, official looking emails are, uh, you know, they are sent by some well-known provider or a bank and these emails acquire the people's password and credit card details. So you have to be very, very careful. Next is a spyware. So when we talk about spyware, so spyware basically is a form of malware is, uh, I mean, it's a malware. So it is an, uh, once you install the same in the computer, you can monitor the keystrokes or you can read or delete the files. You can format the compute or the hard disk or a hard drive and whoever is controlling the spyware has an access to even you know the personal details without the person knowing about it okay now next is um, key loggers so similar to the part of spyware key loggers record a user a uh, keyboard action. Most key loggers will be looking for, you know, uh, details such as your bank credit card or, you know, the passwords or all this cr very crucial details. So it is basically it's a theft or robbing uh, with respect to, you know, uh, people's ideas, inventions and creati creative, that, sorry, uh, creative expressions. It's a form of, you know, it's a, it is linked or identified to intellectual property right. Then next is this farming. Uh, it's a com complex version of uh, phishing, okay? Uh, wherein the farmers often create a web pages. So you, in case if you're directed to the web pages in the form of online banking, the user can get your credential details and there can be a fraud. So rock security software. So this is basically uh, uh, downloading an antivirus or anti spy program, uh, which you have purchased, but um, the security software often asks you to pay extra for the protection. That is again a huge con. You should be aware of this. The security software is completely useless and the criminals have robbed, you know, your, your hard earned money. So it's like that. Okay. Sniffing is when the process, which all the data pack packets passing into the network are monitored. So sniffers can be hardware or software installed in the system. Swoofing is the process where an intruder introduces fake traffic and pretends to be someone else. Like, for example, an email which is sent from a uh, sender address that asks the sensitive data. So you should be aware of all these threats, you know, or the form of threats, which can definitely, you know, affect your system, uh, including your credential details also. Now, what is an antivirus? So it is nothing but a software. It's a class of program that searches the hard drive and profit disk for any potential viruses. So antiviruses runs, you know, programs runs in the random access memory of a computer, which can be of uh, basically uh, two different techniques can be used. Examine the files to look whether they have the viruses or not, or identifying the suspicious behavior of any of the program. So most commercial antivirus software uses both these approaches which emphasizes on the virus dictionary approach. So antivirus is an answer for your virus. So virus and worms, if you, uh, if you want to know the difference, so virus is attached it, it, itself to the executable, executable files and transfer from one system to another. Whereas worm is nothing but a malicious program that repeat, replicates itself and can spread to the computer via network. Uh, yes, in virus, human action is needed, whereas in worms, it's not needed. Speed of spreading is slow, whereas in worms, it is faster. Requirement of a host is needed for spreading, whereas it, in worms, it is not needed. Removing malware uh, is in the form of antivirus and formatting, whereas, you know, virus tools, uh, removal tool or formatting can be the uh, impact for worms also protect the system using antivirus software or your you can use antivirus or firewall so consequences that your files may get corrupted and either may it will be erased it consumes the system sources and slows down and can hold the system completely so that that is the difference between virus and bombs now coming to the next part is yes uh, uh, yes a little bit of digital initiatives a quick look at digital initiatives fastly. So e with one, as I said, it is nothing but a database of the scientists and researchers of leading institutions, which started in the year 1999. 
Coming to the next is e Acharya. It's nothing but the e-content portal, which is developed by National Mission for Education through ICT, which provides, you know, or browses all the learning material, including audio, video, textual materials, etc. Uh, the portal covers quality learning resources, uh, which started in the year 2006, 30th October 2006 creating digital learning environment for design that is called as e-kalpa okay uh, again and mission by the national mission uh, in education through ict uh, started in the year 2002 the ministry of human resource development sponsors e yantra okay basically it is uh, uh, the initiative seeks to provide hands on learning infrastructure to the engineering students who have limited access to the labs and mentors which was started in the year 2009 okay e yantra e kalpa or it was, you know, E Vidwan or E Acharya. The next one you have is uh, My Government. This is an, basically an app types of system. It is an uh, engagement platform which is launched by Government of India in 2014 to promote the participation of the citizens uh, for the development of governance. So it is basically a common platform for the citizens to crowdsource governance ideas from citizens. So Beam, that is nothing but, you know, it is a mobile payment app, uh, basically, which is developed, you know, by the National Payment Corporation of India uh, to facilitate e-payment directly through banks, you know, and, and encourage the cashless transactions. The next one, which you have is Unified Mobile Application, which is a new age governance uh, mobile app, a digital India initiative. So the app supports 13 Indian languages and it's available for Android, iOS or Windows, uh, Windows. So it is basically a governance mobile app and phone pay. It's a digital payment, uh, Indian digital payment and financial services, uh, which has launched in year 2015 uh, in Bangalore. Okay. That is called as phone pay. Then yes, uh, you may get the sums on the decimal to binary conversion. So if you have to convert, you know, uh, three by 10 uh, to binary, so if you 13, sorry, not three. So I have solved over here. So 13, uh, def definitely it is binary. You know? So the base is two. So 13 with the base two, two six. So if you see two six is 12. So what is one is the reminder. One goes over here. Two three is six. There is no reminder. So there is zero over here. Two ones are two. So again, there is a reminder. It is one. So we will start from bottom to top. That is one, one, zero, one is your answer. Same way if you go with 65, so that is decimal now, okay? So decimal, no? So decimal uh, to octal. So what you have to transfer to octal? So the base of octal is 8. So 8, 8 is 64. 1 is the balance. 8, 1 is 8. There is no balance, so 0. So 1, 0, 1. Okay, if it is decimal to hexa, so the base is 16. So 16, 16 is 256, 0, 16, 1 is 16. So 1, 0, 0 is to the power of 16 is the answer so you should know conversion from what to want by basically they give from primary a decimal to binary only but anything can happen then binary to decimal conversion so if you can see the number as one zero one one zero power to the power of two so it is okay so how we split this number one zero one one zero so this is two to the power of zero two to the power of one Two to the power of two, two to the power of uh, okay. Now two, uh, please remember two to the power of three. Okay, zero two to the power of three. But calculating, we have to be very careful. And two to the power of four. Okay, so uh, one into two is two. two. So two to the power of four is sixteen. Zero into two is zero. So zero to the power of three will be zero. One into two is two. two but two to the power of two will be four. One into two is two. Two to the power of one will be two. Same way, 0 into 2 is 0 and two, 2 to the power of 0 is 0. That's the reason we have over here 0. Anything multiplied by 0 will 0. Let's, that's what we have learned, the basic mathematics. So if you add this all, 16 plus 4 plus 2, the answer comes as 22. Then, yes, then there's a question on hardware and software also. So hardware, as we have seen, CPU, monitor, keyboard, uh, mouse, printer, okay, uh, a software in the form of, you know, uh, the documents in the form of a PPT, uh, Google Chrome, or you can talk Gmail or, you know, Word document, PPT, uh, PowerPoint presentation, Windows, these are all what software. 
then yes uh, if you see hardware as i've given in different forms cpu mouse printer system software that is your operating system or utilities and application software in the form of games spreadsheet that is excel word database and internet browsers then yes there is something called as multi processing and multi programming also now what is this multi processing so it refers to you know multiple process at the at the same time by the cpu multi programming is you know programs uh, keep several programs in main memory at the same time and execute them concurrently so uh, multi processing it utilizes multiple cpu it utilizes single cpu they are parallel processing they context the switching you know switching takes place for multi programming it takes less time uh, multi programming takes more time multi processing facilitates efficient utilization while well as programming less efficient uh, utilization uh, multi processing is usually more expensive whereas multi multi -process programming is less expensive then yes the computer language which you have i think yes so we'll first see the slide and then we'll come again back to the slide so computer language is low level language divided into two that is high level and low level so low level language is machine language and assembly language whereas high level we have a general purpose or a special purpose language that is in the form of complier or a interpreter so in complier you have a gol fortran cobol all the languages interpreter is like basic apl pascal okay these are the languages so now let's see uh, the translator uh, used the program used in assembly language is called as assembler there are three types of translator that is assembler compilers and interpreter we are going to see compilers and interpreters separately so assembler is a program uh which is used to translate the written program in assembly language that is into in assembly language into machine language so assembler is a program that takes basic computer instructions and convert them into the pattern of bits that the computer can process with the help of the basic operation some people call this instructions as assembler language and they use the term assembly language so the basically assembly language is nothing but you know the instructions which are converted into bits at the same time we will also see um, complier and interpreter so complier translates the complier program in single line at a time whereas interpreter is you know program line by line uh, it is faster it is slower because it goes line by line it consume complier consumes less time because at one at one go it happens interpreter consumes more time because it has to go line by line complier is more efficient interpreter is less efficient uh when we talk about complier they are larger in size whereas interpreter are smaller so if you can look at this diagram okay so lower level language is only machines can understand interpreter can translate high level language into low or vice versa and high level language only humans can understand then coming to uh, there was a topic called as mode of communication channel in the form of ict so let's see this what are this modes they are called as simple half duplex and full duplex so when i say simple it is unidirection one direction when i say half it is two way when i say full it is two way but simultaneously here in half way it happens one at a time but if you want to happen it make it happen at a time so you can use what you can use a full duplex then we have a simplest uh, sorry simplex mode is sender can send the data but sender can't receive the data in duplex they can send uh, sender can send and also can receive the data but one at a time whereas in duplex it is continuously it is simultaneously will happen in simplex mode uh, provides less performance than uh, half duplex and full duplex performance wise it is less compared to full so the best performance is from full duplex okay example is keyboard and monitor when it comes to simple half duplex is walkie talkies and when it is full duplex it is your telephone okay at a time which can simultaneously which happens at a time so simple duplex if you can see only one side uh, full duplex at a time one but uh, half duplex uh, sorry full duplex it can happen parallelly and half duplex it is at a time okay single time uh, then we have yes catch memory we have started but let's see the sequence also quickly so the increasing order goes with magnetic tapes uh, tapes disks main memory catch memory and register memory so magnetic tapes and magnetic disks are a form of auxiliary memory whereas 
main memory is a form of primary memory secondary memory is also called as auxiliary memory or it is called as external memory so cache is the type of fastest uh, relatively small memory that is stored in the computer it is shortened to cache it is classed as random access memory which a computer microprocessors can assess quickly compared to the what compared to the ram so the increasing order access to the prime ratio so how it goes is that okay so you have a full diagrammatic presentation over here cpu resistors cache memory main memory magnetic disks optical disks magnetic tape so these are the external memories okay these are the internal memories speed increases as we move up so the faster is the cpu resistor and the slow one is magnetic tape so you should remember which are internal cpu that is ccm are your internal cpu cache main and your mom is your external that is magnetic optical and magnetic uh, disk tape and optical okay now how is your url divided it is divided into protocol path okay and this is your domain three types that is protocol domain and your path okay so yes <clears throat> you have the again one topic with respect to voice line voice uh, net and voice protocol so what is this voice line it is a low cost you know phone service that is alternative to traditional phone line with a telephone broadband connection and telephone adapter which allows to make and receive the call and at home or anywhere in the world voice net it means equipment associated with you know Uh, feature accessories in the form of lining cabling uh, controller and voice voice portal portals is the voice equi equivalent of web portals giving access to the information through you know spoken words and commands or responses uh, yes so this i have repeated i think it is again came up binary as i said base of 2 that is 0 and 1 decimal 10 that is from numbers digit 0 to 9 hexa that is from 0 to 9 and alphabet a to f octal that is 0 to 7 in the with the base of 8 okay this is very very important for you so yes that's all for the day with uh, respect to ict now we have two more units that is you know uh one is the people and environment where important unit and ed higher education which i'll be simultaneously taking on but as i said that this revision see it is you have taken really lot of efforts to study for so many months but unless and until you do not do revision now you you may have uh, this amount of pressure that how do we revise so many things in a span of one day or two days that's the reason we are making this video so that you know you can quickly revise you can just look sit at once revise it and at least you are assured that you have taken a revision of each unit and you are going for the examination so that thank you very much say stay tuned do not forget to subscribe our channel ensure that all the notification important notifications are going to come and definitely you will be getting all the details so we'll keep on supporting you just ensure that you are working hard and ensuring to crack your examination thank you everyone